What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. I've been working on this project for a while now, and uh, it, there's been a lot of research and trial and error and beta testing I've been doing on it. But I'm I'm ready to finally release it to you, and it is the Warboss Tay Painting Challenge Journal. This video is going to be all about how to use it and uh, what benefit it can bring to your life and your painting goals in 2024. So I developed this. This is the cover. I developed this as a way to help motivate you and to um, help you clarify your goals. A lot of the reason why people, a lot of the reasons why people give up on their painting goals, their New Year's resolutions, their grand ideas for what they want to collect is because they don't write down their goals. You'll see a new project, a new army being teased, or a new game like the old world being um, hyped up, and uh, you want it because it appeals to that part of your brain that wants to engage in the hobby and the creativity and the painting and the fun. But then when you finally purchase it and you bring it home and you set it down on your table, you realize that uh, you don't have the, the way forward. You don't have a roadmap to get you to the finish line. So this is a way to help you organize your brain to creating a workable path to get to where you're going. And uh, the cover of it is basically the diagram. I'm going to walk you through it. But before I do, the size of this journal, it's not that big. It's not as big as a regular notebook either. It's the same size as this Bretonian Battle Standard box. It's about as wide and a little bit shorter lengthwise. But as you can see, this box is not very big. So it's not going to take up a lot of real estate on your painting table. I designed it specifically so it wouldn't be taking up a lot of space and it's got the spiral on the side so you could turn it to any page of what you're working on and have that be just as compact as you need it to be here on the side at the back of it there is a section with these two pockets the reason for this i believe is because as i get older one of the things i find is that i can't rely on my memory as much as i used to when i was just painting for fun living at home with my parents and uh, I had nothing better to do with my life. Now that I've got a family and all of these grown-up responsibilities, I cannot be bothered to remember where the shading was from the ends and the tips of the feathers to this part, like which part was lighter, which part was darker. I can't remember that. So I've got this section in the back of my journal where I can keep reference photos in these pockets. Just take up scissors and clip uh, cut out the back of these boxes. Once we get home and we take our miniatures out, we usually chuck these boxes anyways, right? We throw them out. But what I found is that it's so great to see up close a close-up shot of the detail work on a lot of these miniatures. A lot of people throw these boxes away because they don't think there's any value to them anymore. But then when you get to painting your model, you realize, I don't remember what color that is. And just flip to the back of the box and you can see, oh, okay. That's supposed to be gold, that's silver, that checker pattern on the guitar strap carries all the way over to the back. And you can see how from the different angles, the only way uh, or the only thing you need to do to utilize all this knowledge is to just cut it out of the rest of the box and slap it in here as uh, your reference. It's great too, because I travel a lot for um, my family going back and forth to the Bay Area and to our home in Sacramento. So I don't want to always be flipping through like a whole binder full of artwork. I've got uh, just this pocket here that I can store the reference art from the different boxes of whatever I'm working on. And I keep it nice and compact. It leaves me more room to carry my miniatures and my paints that I'm going to be traveling with. So looking at the rest of the book, You've got all these pages, you can write color recipes, or you can do scrapbooking and post pictures of what you're painting, whatever you want. The way that I intended this journal to be utilized though, is to use this diagram to tackle your projects. And the way that you're gonna do that is by clearly writing out what your painting goals are. Now, you can use this cover of the journal, go to town, with a pencil and just erase it every time you're gonna work on something new. But what I figured would be better was if you have this diagram, this outline, this blueprint for tackling your painting projects, and then just replicate them. Copy and paste that 
uh, blueprint for every single page for whatever you're working on. And as an example, I'm going to show you what I wrote down for my Armored Sentinel. It is basically the blueprint that I used to work on the Armored Sentinel that I just posted up on my eBay store. I painted that thing, whereas for the whole past year since I've had it, since I've built it, I've assembled it, I spray painted it, I just couldn't get any further. It, it was overwhelming to me and I didn't have a clear path forward. Every time I would sit down, I would say, okay, I'm really going to work on this Armored Sentinel today. I just couldn't do it. And the reason why was because I felt like I'd hit an artistic roadblock where I had all this potential, right? You have a pile of potential. I had this potential, potentially awesome Armored Sentinel and I just didn't know how to how to um, chisel away at that so that I could have the product that I wanted. The product in my brain I felt would be unachievable. So it was better to just leave it primered and not touch it. And I think a lot of us feel that way about many of the projects in our bins. Many of the miniatures we've started painting, we just didn't finish. I've got like tons and tons of them. So this is the system I'm gonna use. And uh, I'm gonna use every single page in this book to tackle all of my projects. And I wanna share that with you. All right, so as an example, fully painted Armored Sentinel, that's my painting goal. You break it down into three targets. My targets were base coats, shades and highlights, and then technical. You can't get to the technical until you do the base coats. You can't get to the shades and highlights until you do the base coats. It goes in order. Your three targets are in chronological order. And to achieve those targets and move on to the next one, you have action steps. So I knew that in order to get the base coats done before I could get to the shades and the highlights, I need to I needed to block out where where on the Sentinel the black areas were, the black casing, the black of the plasma cannon, uh, the silver bits, where were the silver bits that were specifically painted in lead belcher rather than the green armor plating that was that's the standard for uh, Astro Militarum vehicles. So silver, black, and all the other colors like the um, the the brown for the leather straps holding the ammo canister on the side or uh, all of the other base coats that I can't think of the top of my head like the the light has some blue in it and um, the colors on the the, um, the hunter killer missile every single one has a checkbox next to it when you're done and you finish it you would check it off uh, I, I left the blank so I could show you how I wrote it out. But once I hit the silver, I moved on to the black. Then I moved on to all the other colors. Then base coats, the first target is basically hit. So I moved on to the shades and highlights. Known oil, agrox, earth shade. Each one of these I hit and then moved on to the next one. Finally, getting on to the technical, which is the like the base work, the transfers, the decals. I did the plasma effect. I did some rust and grime. Then I did the transfers, I finished the basing, and then my final step in all of my projects is to paint the rim of the bases in Abaddon Black. And that's my way of saying this is the, it's like my artist's signature, right? Once that's done, you put the miniature down, you spray varnish it or however you want to seal it, and then that's it. So this was my roadmap, my blueprint for finishing the fully painted Armored Sentinel, getting it done and put up on the eBay store. And it looks glorious. I love how it turned out. Everything turned out the way I wanted it to because I clearly wrote out my roadmap for it. So that's what I want you to do. Take your projects and divide them up into uh, goals that are achieved through these action steps. Now. To wrap up this video, guys, I'm going to be real with you. This is going to be a rough year for me. Moving forward, I've got some girls on the way. They're already here. They're growing in my lady boss's belly right now. I'm going to be having uh, twins in April in only a couple months. And that means that my entire studio is probably going to come to a screeching halt. I have an idea of what I want to do for the War Boss Taste Summer Painting Challenge so that the challenge can continue without me there um, 
really actively being a part of it, but I could set it in motion. I know a lot of people like to take part in the challenge because it uh, helps you get some work done. And I think this is gonna help you prepare for it. So the summer painting challenge is gonna be from May through August. And basically choose one of those months, either uh, one of those complete months or break up your challenge into 31 days, just like usual. If you can only do like a week in May and then nothing in June, in July you can do two weeks, in August you could do a week, or just split up your 31 days, <laughs> however you wanna do it. Um, we wanna get some work done. We wanna get some miniatures painted and we wanna finish our projects. I hope that you check out the link and get one of these journals so that you can join me on your own and um, work on your miniatures. It could be as small as one single figure. It could be as large as an entire army. Whatever you want to accomplish in 31 days of hobby time, then uh, that's what this journal is supposed to help you to do. Guys, I gotta be honest, 2024, I would love it if it was the year that we made significant um, impact into our piles of potential. If I could help you get rid of all of those gray plastic miniatures or gray unpainted metal miniatures and have these beautiful glorious projects and armies uh, in like on your shelf in your cases ready to go ready to play or uh, give away or sell or do whatever you want to do with then that is my goal that is how I want to uh, that's how I want you to remember me as the guy on YouTube that helped you to uh, tackle your projects I hope you check out this journal I hope it will uh, help you and give you that little bit of clarity and focus that you need. And uh, if you don't want to purchase the journal itself, just use this blueprint because I felt it really worked for me for doing the Sentinel and doing just about every single project I've got on eBay is a result from me hammering it out after writing out the plan here. Let me know what you think and uh, leave me a comment before you go. Thanks so much for watching this video sticking to, to the end. I don't know if you can hear the rain falling pretty hard in California. We're uh, experiencing some bad storms right now, some stormy weather. So uh, I'm gonna get back in the house. I'm in the garage. I'm gonna get back in the house before I uh, float away and we'll see you in the next video. Latest players.